สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today's video is another one of my series on Thai ingredients 101. So if you want to check out the rest of the series, I'll put the link down below. But today we are going to talk about one of the staple ingredients you can find in any Thai kitchen, and that is. Curry paste. It's also something I get a lot of questions about, so hopefully we will tackle them all today. Let's get started. What do we mean by curry paste in the context of Thai cuisine? Well, it's basically just a mixture of herbs and spices, and it's usually spicy, at least a little bit. Now, at the store, you can find pre-made curry paste, but usually people can only find red. Green and yellow curry paste, but really there are endless variations of curry paste. And yes, you can actually make up your own blend. And people freestyle curry paste at home all the time. And people often think that curry paste are these long, complex recipes with lots of ingredients, but they can actually be really simple. For example, a Thai sour curry or gang som only has like five things in the ingredient list, and you can check out that video. I'll put the link right up here. Now, what is in a curry paste? So, even though there are no official rules about what has to be in a curry paste, there are things that show up a lot. So, I'm gonna call these the fantastic four of curry paste. These are four ingredients that are there in almost all types of curry paste. Those are chilies, garlic, shallots. And shrimp paste, and then lemongrass and galangal do show up a lot as well. And apart from that, you can add any number of herbs and spices like cilantro roots, kaffir lime zest, cumin, coriander, turmeric, anything you want. Let me go on the record saying this: that there is absolutely no shame in buying store-bought curry paste. You go to Thailand to any markets, you're gonna see. Pre-made curry paste sold by bucket loads. So Thai people buy them all the time because it's a lot of work to make curry paste, right? But I think that if you're really interested in Thai cuisine, it's a great experience to do at least once because you really get to witness sort of the transformation of all the different ingredients and and you understand where the flavors come from. So it's a great project. I recommend. So if you want to make it for the experience of it, I recommend going old school with a modern pestle because it sort of allows you to witness the aromas that keep changing as you add more stuff. It's really kind of a cool experience. But you want a heavy-duty, big stone modern pestle like this, not a cute little marble one, because that will take you forever. Okay. Now, if you want speed, you've seen me in. Most of my recent videos, I like to use a combination of coffee grinder like this, which I use for my dry stuff because it gets it nice and powdery. And then for my wet stuff, my moist herbs, I use an immersion blender. And the reason why an immersion blender works well is because you don't need to add a lot of liquid. You don't need to add any liquid at all in order to get it going. And you can do small amounts. You don't have to do a large batch. Now, if you're interested in the model that I use and recommend, I Have it listed in my kit. I'll put the link right down below. So a jug blender like this can work. However, you probably need to add a little more liquid to make it work. But depending on the recipe, you may not want that liquid. Like if you're doing fish cakes, for example, that added liquid is going to make the fish cakes too soft. You don't want it. Um, also, you might need to make a double batch because otherwise, there's not enough stuff for it to work. So. You know, kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, food processors can work. I find they don't get the stuff quite as fine as blenders or modern pestle. But if you're working with a recipe that doesn't need the paste to be that fine, then it could work for you. Now, if you're going to buy curry paste at the store, how do you choose a good brand? Now, unfortunately, when it comes to curry paste, the only way to know is to try. Like reading the ingredient list isn't going to help you out all that much. Okay, but When you do try it, there are four things you want to think about. First is spiciness. Unfortunately, spiciness and flavor are tied together when it comes to curry paste. So if you buy a paste that's too spicy for you, in order to cut that down, you have to use less paste, and then by default, you're out also. Cutting down on the rest of the other herbs and spices as well, so that's not ideal. So it's better if you buy a paste that has just the right amount of spiciness, or have less spiciness, and then you can add more paste or add more chilies to the recipe. Second thing is saltiness. Some curry paste are really salty, and others are not very much. So if salt level is something you're worried about, you can check the sodium content and the nutritional value thingy at the back. 
but make sure you're comparing the same serving size, okay? Because sometimes serving size is like a tablespoon, another brand it might be two teaspoons. So you gotta do a little bit of math before you make your decision. Third thing, shrimp paste. As I said before, shrimp paste is a very common ingredient in curry paste. However, a lot of commercial brands omit it so that if you're vegetarian or you're allergic to shellfish, you can still use it, okay? So if that's you, make sure you read the ingredient list before you buy. And if you want shrimp paste, but your curry paste doesn't have it, you can just add it to the curry. Easy peasy. Finally, flavor. Obviously, flavors are going to vary between brands. If you try something you don't like, don't write off the whole category of green curry. It might just be a brand that you don't like. So for me, because I know you're going to ask, the one that I like is this one right here. And FYI, this is not sponsored. I'm just telling you what I use. Um, I like this one because it's got really good flavor. However, it is spicier and saltier than many other brands. So for you, that might not work. Some of their stuff also has shrimp paste, like this one does, yellow one, their yellow doesn't. So you just have to check the ingredient list. I also like ones that come in individual packs like this because then I don't have to deal with leftovers. Like this massive tub is like far too much for me. If I need to use a red curry that is vegetarian, I like to go with the one in the tin. Also, this is spicier than a lot of other brands, so it may not work for you. So you just have to try things out and see what hits the spot for you. Let's talk storage. If you've got leftover curry paste, and this applies to whether you make it or you buy it, okay? Freeze it, that's it. Plain and simple. Put it in a freezer bag, press it down so it's nice and flat so it's easy to thaw and press all the air out of it. It'll last in your freezer for several months. If, however, you've got plans to use it within one week, it will be okay in the fridge. But if you've got no plans for it, straight in the freezer. Using curry paste. Now, most people think, well, if I have curry paste, of course I'm gonna make a curry. But there are so many other things you can do with it, so much so that I am making another video talking about different ways that you can use the curry paste. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And when it is up, I will put the link right up here. And that is it. I hope that answered most of the questions that you had about curry paste. If you have more questions about it, definitely you can reach out to me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. If you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do so you don't miss an episode like this. And click that little bell icon as well so you get a notification when I post a new video. If you love the show and you want to support us, check out our Patreon link in the description below. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.